Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners, if you love this show, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. We have a coffee mug, we have an amazing beach towel, and we have some very cute short shorts in many sizes. That's right. So if you want to get yours now and make your butt look like Natasha's butt, go to EndlessHoneymoonPod.com slash shop. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Natasha is my wife. Kind of lucked out. Yeah, I did, actually. I did, in a lot of ways. I got a good career. I got three healthy dogs, two of which are dying. I've got a good family life. I have a great child, daughter child. Um, I am able to afford vacations now and again. I've got an impeccable sense of style and uh, a sharp brain. And I've got a spouse. You want to hear some of the comments I got on my Instagram? About what? Well, I check my direct messages once a year. Oh, okay now. So you did I, the annual call? <laughs> I just was looking. I was seeing if anyone wanted to offer me something cool. Okay. Let me, uh, I got a feeling uh, what you got offered that was uncool. Stranger dick. Hi, Natasha. I just wanted to say that you're not alone in how you view the world. I'm listening to the latest episode, and I totally relate to everything you're saying, especially in regards to COVID. It's totally understandable and normal to be afraid of the worst case scenario. Sometimes I remind myself is that our, sometimes what I like to remind myself is that our thoughts are just thoughts. They aren't real, but try not to be ruled by fear. My husband is a psychotherapist and Moshe sounds just like him. Thank you. It's annoying. I'm jealous of how these men are able to just live their lives without having to consider their fears first. And I do agree that at least to an extent being a woman definitely colors our outlook and makes us more naturally afraid. Can I hone in on the part of that email that I thought was the most significant? Hmm. She said, I sound exactly like a psychotherapist. You know what I'm saying? It sounds trained, like a drag, a trained professional who can diagnose mental illness, who can help on an advice podcast. Dear Natasha, how can mothers slash women not feel exhausted and depleted right now? The world relies on empathy and someone picking up the slack, and more often than not, it ends up on our shoulders. Moshe can feel his freedom, and that's beautiful. But let's acknowledge that the fact that he can is based on societal norms, that no matter what seeps into our lives, stop minimizing our struggle, dude. Okay. I mean, she didn't say dude, but he, you are minimizing the struggle. Well, how? By being happy to be free and encouraging you to feel the same? Is the idea that no woman feels free? No. I just was glad to have I'll, some sister, yah yah sisterhood. I'll stop, but I'm just No, you saying. don't have to stop. You keep, keep on, keep on keeping on. I'm Listen, glad you're finding you're friends good, online. Uh, they're not my friends. That's cool I'm that just, you found people to hang out with. I think that's cool. Bunch of sad sacks getting together talking about how you can't have any fun. I did like the idea and how you that invented empathy. Mm. What? I do wonder if women have more empathy. I would say, I, by virtue of the fact that women do ninety nine percent less of the murders, it feels like the answer is they just must automatically right? got to be yes. Like they just released the twenty top richest people in the world, and it's like mostly men. I think there was two women, Mc mm -hmm. Mackenzie Bezos. Mackenzie Bezos. Mackenzie Bezos. And then there was another woman from France. But then all the rest are men and they rated their... Um, charity scores. Their charity scores uh, and philanthropy score with hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, the women all had four hearts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that guy who you like who made the car you drive. He's not the guy that he I had, like. He had one star. I, I, Elon Musk is not the guy that I like. They, I, Mackenzie's I like, husband had one star. Oh, that's the guy that you like? <laughs> because I've noticed you've been shopping <laughs> using his technology. I don't like Elon Musk. I have a, I have a Tesla and it drives well. But By all the these way, men, it's so it's so crazy to me that, that people are so rich that it wouldn't impact their lives at all. The only way it impacts, here's how it impacts billionaires to give back a little bit and have more of more taxes and, you know, maybe have like a four on their on their philanthropy score is uh, the way that it impacts it is they can no longer be number one. What they, do you mean? 
Well, because they want to look at this top 20 and be like, I'm number six. I got to get to be number one. Mm. They all want to look at each other and be like the top because Mm -hmm. it doesn't, if you, uh, when you have like hundreds of billions of dollars, it doesn't really matter, right? Like you can still eat whatever. It's not like it's cutting into your lifestyle at all. To be number eight as opposed to being number five. To not be on the number, to still be a billionaire or, you know, whatever it is, but just not be in the top 20. But these guys have such an ego. I'm sorry, Natasha. I don't mean to um, be offensive here, but you're sounding a lot like communist scum. <laughs> is that? Am I just getting to know that about you? Are you a pinko? Just to use some of the slang that the Gen Zers use. Pink, you're a pinko commie? I mean, you're right. You know, we were just talking about this last night. Dr. Bronner's who is a company I freaking love, and they sent me free chocolate, and they're awesome. They have a corporate um, payout system where the CEO can't make, it's something like 70 times as much uh, as the lowest paid employee. So the cap on the CEO pay is like 70 times more than the lowest paid employee. I don't know if that's the exact number. It might be 50 times, it might be 20 times, or whatever it is. What it means is that the CEO of Bronner's can get rich but they have to bring the whole company along with them and they have to. Of course. It's, it's, it's so crazy and absurd that these rich people are acting like they're just rich because they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and it has nothing to do with stealing from everyone underneath them. And then they've got no, these pictures but, that they're so proud but, of. But those people are their bootstraps. Right. They, they, so they did. They're like, yeah, pick my, look, my bootstrap over there. That's a dude named Tom. Hey, bootstrap. And that's Diane over there. She's been working for $12 an hour for a decade now. That's bootstrap number two. So I think these these billionaires must lack empathy, right? That, that's that got to be a thing. I think to become a billionaire. Someone should do a study. I think to become a billionaire, you have to have a different form of, uh, of if you have empathy, it's a different kind of empathy. Like, like, like you have Bill, empathy for your bank account. No, not that. I'm saying like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, the kind of the, the they most, had fours, the most phila- philanthropic billionaires. They probably um, are on their way up. We're like, I'll get, I'll do whatever it takes to get all this money. Fuck the, I don't care who stands in my way, who gets hurt. You can't become a billionaire without collateral damage. Just like how you can't become the president without having moral failings. You can't become a billionaire without having done some immoral shit. But once they get there, they go, look, it was all worth it. I can now retroactively apply empathy to the world and to society. I'll cure malaria, et cetera, et cetera. So they're operating on some kind of a different frequency of what they think being empathetic is, right? Uh, on the other hand, you can have zero empathy, like a one star, like a Bezos. I don't know if he has zero empathy. I'm sure he's got some form of empathy, but I don't know if it's applied to his economic uh, payout plan. Well, then M- Mackenzie Bezos, whitest name in the world, she uh, she gives back tons, but it's all to like schools. Forget, forget the memories of Bezos fucking her. Well, no, this is what I'm thinking is funny, is she gives only to like all these schools. Yeah. But then, did you notice who she's dating? Who's that now? School teacher. So she's like kind of being like, fuck you, Bezos. Oh, I'm she's all like, my oh, this money. dick is so good. <laughs> I'm giving all oh, my I money love education. to schools and education because of my new boyfriend. Who knows? But you know what? Give to schools. That's what you should be doing. Well, speaking of school, Natasha, not to get you off of your, um, uh, um, s- your revolutionary Maoist soapbox, but speaking of school, the person who we have on today is releasing a special and it's so funny it's like going to comedy school it's like be taking a class in comedy whoa that was a long trek yeah to get to a non-joke it wasn't a joke it's real it's what's about to happen our guest today has a comedy central special that just dropped it's called imperfect messenger he is truly one of the funniest stand-up comedians in the country you've seen him on the daily show he's a lovely man uh do you mind if i introduce him i love him i love Listen, I mean, I've, back. I've known him longer than I knew I've known you. Well, listen, okay, you love him. I love him too. You're gonna love him on this show, and go watch his special. Our friend Roy Wood Jr. Let's get this party started. Roy Wood Jr., ladies and gentlemen, how are you, Roy? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, man. No complaints. Good deal. No complaints. <laughs> You're the only person I've ever heard <laughs> say that in the past two years. <laughs> I mean, I just think that it's not worthy of it. I do find some stuff to complain about, but for the most part, you know, I'm okay. But I'm, you're I'm a positive. Okay. You're a positive guy, aren't you? 
I, I, I am a optimistic pessimist, if that makes sense. Oh, you're a hater with a job. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, one other thing is every other person I talk to when I haven't seen them in two years, uh, which is it's good to see you, they pop up on screen and I'm like, wow, it's been a rough couple of years. Well, you look... <laughs> You look like nothing has changed. You look like That's, the pandemic has had no effect on you. All I did, bro, was lose five pounds and get a goatee. And I'm tricking everybody. <laughs> the goatee slims the bottom half. It's killed all the Martin Luther King comparisons. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It does look good. Roy, I realized the other when we when I knew you were doing the podcast, I realized the first TV appearance I ever did, I had to follow you. On premium oh, blend. That was a good ass time. That was You were the, so good and I was it made me so stressed out. But did you kill too? Yeah, but not as yeah. hard as Roy. Oh uh, no, don't you lie. <laughs> don't you lie. <laughs> I didn't. Was, but it did kind of like amp me up. Like because you were like doing so well, it was like inspiring. I hope that that shit stays in the vault that it's in forever the fashion choices that i made in 2005 <laughs> and i moshe i had my shirt tucked in dog i tucked in my shirt because this was the belt buckle era of rap music the yeah, texas shit sure and, and i'm like yeah these hoes need to see my belt but it wasn't even expensive <laughs> You couldn't afford a good belt buckle yet? Well, I did not remember your outfit. I just remembered your your positive vibe and like how hilarious you were and how much the audience that liked you. That is funny. That was my first white television credit as well. <laughs> <laughs> which seems weird, but like, so backstage at BET's Comic View, there would be a bunch of black comics. Most of you might know this shit. Where Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you for that. <laughs> they, they, they would take baby oil, Natasha. Motherfuckers backstage at Comic View would take baby oil and rub it on their jewelry so it would glisten under the light. <laughs> I am not familiar with that. <laughs> That's so, a black trope that I'm not aware of. So, I so love when it. I, when I did premium blend, I brought this baby oil with me and I'm backstage <laughs> and, and I'm looking around and nobody else is doing the baby oil. So I just kept... you're, da you're dabbing your belt buckle. You're like, why is yeah. nobody dabbing their buckle over here? Wait, does that really work? Because I would think it would be bad for the watch. That is so funny. It's not about the watch. It's about looking good on camera. It's a cheap right. $40 Seiko. <laughs> But you so you're turning it into a, that. into a solid gold Rolex by just making it glisten? Yes, is this is so before funny. 4K. 4K tells no lies. You can't fool me. In 4K, you can see a little droplet of Johnson & Johnson's baby oil dripping down your watch. By the, Roy, by the way, Roy, my dad's like that, too. He always has like a money clip, and he's always trying to like show his gold watch and his pinky ring. And, you know, it's like um, he definitely Gangster. is... He should have been on BET. <laughs> I get it, though. I like it. I, I feel like I do a, a version of that. What's the female version of that? I'm not sure. What's the white female version of that? <laughs> but see, women, you all can wear cheap stuff and make it look expensive, and that's somehow a reward. Like, you see this belt, you see these shoes, $7. That's all I spent. And it's cool. <laughs> Men can't do that. <laughs> what, are the right. other, what are the other differences between white TV appearances and black TV appearances? The food. It's better, better at the white or worse at the white? Uh, it's, there is no food at the black. There oh, is, is that right? <laughs> there is no snacks. There is nothing. I remember I got cussed out the second year I did Comic View because I walked off the studio lot to just go get something to eat. Like, they had basic water and soda. But I was like, I want a fucking sandwich. And I just left when I came back. Where were you? You can't leave the property. Why would you do? Like, I didn't know the rules of television. Like, you're supposed to stay put like you're on a field trip and your chaperone will get you. You know what else? There's no dip. They, they don't have on uh, on Comedy Central television spots is uh, animated ladies. Comic View used to have these animated ladies. Do you remember that? It was like towards the mm -mm. end of the of the run, there would be these animated like kind of like Playboy cartoons. Yeah, they were like I Playboy, remember that exactly like leaning kind of and enjoying the show, but they was like very uh, old school clip art kind of animation of just like oh, somebody damn. that might enjoy this television program. <laughs> <laughs> like there is the the other big difference was like 
the timeliness of it all. Like, I can speak freely now because enough years have passed, but Kevin Hart hosted a season of Comet View in 2007 that went so horrible, most of the episodes didn't even air. And if you ask any black comic about the 07 year of Comic View, and it was just, it was late. The audience was tired. It's three in the morning. There's still four more comics to go. And they're like begging people to not leave. Like it was the, it was the most chaotic shit I've ever experienced in my life. The one thing I do like about when I was doing a lot of black shows is that after you perform, you can hang out. And I used to love staying and watching like, the other performers and shit, but like with like mainstream and like, I guess you can say white, like just white TV shows. Once you're done, yeah, you gotta get the fuck out. We appreciate you. <laughs> you, did, you did a great job though. You're great. You're very funny. Oh my God. Here's your car. Okay. We'll see you later. They're like, bitch, you got your sandwich. Now get the fuck off the set. Now it's yes. time to go. So the rules yes. are just different. It just depends. The best when... is when they get you the car there, but not back. Uh. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you're, you're not that. You're not that important. When I lost on Star Search and oh, I think that was like was the same year, oh five, maybe oh six. Me and John Heffron, we both we both lost to Alonzo Bowden in the semifinals, and me and Heffron both turned down our cars to just walk down Sunset. They were taping at Sunset and Gower, and we just walked down Sunset and just went and had like Carl's Jr. <laughs> there is there is nothing commiserate uh, yeah. lo- losing is bad but just just the come down after a tv taping no matter what even if you kill even if it's your special which by the way that's what you're here to talk about your specials are so fucking good you're such a great comic if you don't haven't seen roy stand up do yourself a favor truly one of the best and it just came out your brand new special imperfect yeah. messenger on comedy central it was good to be able to kind of address, you know, some deeper shit. Like, I'm not the guy who has solutions to the problems, but I have stupid shit that could just be done. Like, when you talk about police reform, why has no one asked the police to just talk in complete sentences on the radio? There's no need for these codes. There's no need for this <laughs> jargon. You're not in fucking mm-hmm. Iraq avoiding the enemy. Like, just use... Re- that's why the cops keep showing up and shooting the wrong motherfucker because you don't have all the information. <laughs> could they could just you, say it's not Brian? Yeah. Like it's like it's that it's that type of it's it's fun to have those type of thoughts and a place to like get all of that stuff out of my system, man. Don't you think don't you think cops kind of think they're being cool with well, like all cool. the jargon? I don't know, it's yeah. not not cool. It's very cool. I three fan three Victor David. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a giant, <laughs> that's actually a giant part of the problem is that every cop is like a fucking high school bully that's just got now got a cool uniform on and can talk in weird jargon and drive around in a, hu- in a uh, uh, an armored Hummer. It is too cool. We should actually, here's a, here's a thought. Let's put them all in really dorky outfits. Let's put them all in uh, Roy Wood Jr. Uh, premium blend 2005 outfits. Bring them oh. down, bring them down a couple pegs, you know? I was, I, I didn't get to talk about this in a special, but I was also like talking with one of my buddies about this and how I, I said that like if the cops every now and then just let somebody go like it would change so much shit because like as a black person you can't tell other black people you had a good interact no one would believe you if you had a good interaction <laughs> you're basically right. the farmer that saw the dog right <laughs> or like saw an alien it's like i saw an alien i'm telling you what it's like nah you did the police didn't just let you go like i had I had an interaction in South Dakota. I'm sure you both played Nitwits Comedy Club. <laughs> R.I.P. Nitwits Comedy Club. I, I've not played I, I don't even think I turned down a Nitwits. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Why are all the comedy it's, club names all insults, by the way? It's like <laughs> Nitwits, Dum Dums. You know what I mean? Like low <laughs> IQs. Have you played low IQs in Saskatchewan? You There's, played developmental disabled up in uh, yeah. like Toledo? <laughs> Nitwits. Was, Wait, uh, where is I, that? It's in Sioux Falls, and I was leaving there one night. I blew a .07. This is 2003, and it was negative 10 degrees outside. And the cop, you know, and I'm, and I'm explaining to him everything. I'm like, man, if I lose my license and everything, here's everything bad that'll happen. I can't drive. I can't do comedy. And the cop went, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to take your coat, and you just have to walk back to the hotel. Cold? If you make it. <laughs> your car keys will be there for you in the morning what 
So he just said you have to be cold on the way back to the hotel? Negative 10 cold, dog, and it's Damn. like a mile and a half. It's not far, <laughs> so it's, but it's far. I, I, I'm kind of respecting this I guy. I like it. He gave you a I physical challenge. It. I respect it. It's like, do you want a DUI or do you want to play, play the feud? Did, so, did you do it? <laughs> of course he did it. Yes. You what? Hell yeah, he did it. He's not a nitwit. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that as one of the most painful things in your life? And did it help you not do something like that again, it like is, drink and drive? It, I've never drink and drive. Like buzz driving is drunk driving. You're goddamn right it is drunk driving. I believe yeah. that shit a thousand percent. Yeah, I totally. never And this is pre-Uber. There weren't a lot of choices, you know? I actually love this idea, Roy. It's the police no longer have guns, but there's one guy in every uh, squadron that has a gun. The police pull you over. They give you a specific physical challenge. If you decline the challenge, then they call the bad cop to come in, and he's got to do whatever he does. But there's all these physical challenges. And then everybody can see in the neighborhood, like, oh, this is kind of fun. It's kind of it turns into a little bit of a fun That's show. That's funny. The designated abuser. Like, you have to be a good <laughs> cop long enough to get promoted to be the bruiser. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Encourage just better police, and I like this. The more creative you are, the more they'll good, put you in a specialized neighborhood. It's like, okay, this guy actually's yes. got some really good ideas for the Latinx community. Let's throw <laughs> him in there. Let's see what he has to say. Um, How do we watch the special? By the way, uh, Paramount in. Plus, and I'm whenever you know at Comedy Central, they'll rerun it once, and then two months from now they'll show it every night. But Paramount Plus for sure. I like Paramount Plus. I have that. App. Im Imperfect Messenger on Comedy Central on Paramount Plus. Roy Wood Jr. Uh, obviously one of the funniest stand-ups in uh, the world. I would say I'm not. I don't think I'm gassing you up to say that. I believe that. Uh, Roy, you know that we do calls here on this podcast where we get we get advice and we we count on uh, creative thinkers like you, people okay. that want the designated abuser, people that come up <laughs> with ideas like that to help us out. So uh, let's. We're gonna can, call. Can we take one call? Do you oh, have yeah, time? Uh, absolutely. All okay. right, let's do it. We're going to call Tom in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, home of my favorite club, the Stupid Motherfuckers. Have you played that? <laughs> I will say, though, this whole section of Canada, I think they're sweeties. They are. Can Canadians are sweet. Let's find out about Tom. Here he is. Tom, oh. what's happening? How Can much are you? Your head? Oh, yeah. What's up with the top of your head? Oh, hell yeah. There you go. You look like an ultimate fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Wait, yeah. Tom, uh, you know Roy Wood Jr., yes. Natasha, hello, Moshe. Hello. Hi. How you doing? How, what are the cops like in Calgary? They're probably real nice, huh? Um, sure. <laughs> you do look like you have a criminal past a little bit. No, I'm a very good Catholic boy. Oh, okay, good. Well, how can we help? <laughs> What's going on? Um, okay, so... I was dating this guy for five years. Oh, what do you mean you're a very good Catholic boy? <laughs> the first thing out the gate, you're dating a guy? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were dating for five years. On and off, we broke up a couple of times here and there. He moved around a lot for school. But we always ended up getting back together. We are long distance near the end. And there's, like, a common theme throughout our relationship. Um, he was Jewish. He wanted me to convert. Um, and I was looking into doing that for him. Sounds um, reasonable, by the way, to me. He seems like a cool guy. I'm on his side. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, no particular. Even though, reason. even though the religion doesn't accept the marriage anyway. <laughs> well, let's not get into the minutia. <laughs> He's Jewish. I support him. Keep going. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're dating, and there's also an eight-year age gap between us, and we broke up. It's been about two years now, and I found out through mutual friends that. He's married and to a not Jew. And uh, he has no intention of converting for him. So I don't know, it kind of like dredged up a bunch of like old feelings I didn't know were there anymore. Like, did he break up with me because thought it was because of the Judaism thing and because of maybe he's too young or something like that. But now I'm like, I don't know the reason why we broke up. I never really got a good explanation. So do I text him? Is it going to give me closure? Is it going to open doors? I don't want to open. Uh, Roy, what do you think? As a as a Christian that lives with a lot of regret that Jesus hasn't <laughs> fixed for me, um, and as, also as a guy who has had a lot of weird breakups, the first question is, what com what is on the other side of this conversation? Is there a relationship? Is that possible? If not, you just got to cut and release. If there is something you want, and like, because basically, 
you found out you was the side dude. So there's a lot. Of- <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, there's so, two years, and I we broke up, and then two oh, years okay. Died. Yeah. Then he married. Okay, and so then he married somebody that wasn't with. That what what word can I say? Can I say wasn't Jewish? Is that the word that won't? No, get me that's in actually very anti-Semitic to say wasn't <laughs> Jewish, Roy. That's actually the, that's the most offensive thing that we can hear. The you found out he married someone that was basically with the same beliefs as you, but didn't marry you, and instead married them. So then there might have just been some sense of settling with them that might have been happening because ultimately he wanted to be with someone that was Jewish and chose somebody else. And there could have been some other things like the age differential or some other thing that made him not put the Jewish stuff as high of, on a level of importance. Yeah. If that make, if that makes sense. Like I used to want to be with a woman that had a job until I met an unemployed <laughs> woman that was like really fucking great at a lot of other shit. And I was like, you know what, baby, <laughs> you ain't gotta have a job. And then the chick that had a job was like, well, what the fuck? And, and so th- this is a long time ago. I'm not talking about my girl now, but, <laughs> You have to add that. (laughs) Disclaimer. Yeah, but no, like, honestly, it could have been something in addition that that person brings to the table that you didn't. And even if you got the truth, he's still married. And what does that do for you? I don't know. It brought up feelings I didn't think I still had. It it seems like you're going to have to get over it because it doesn't matter why you guys broke up because also I've broken up with people and told them it was a reason that it really wasn't, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of different reasons why you break up with people. And obviously it wasn't the right relationship for either of you. So, you know, like what Roy said is true. You have to look if you if it's really going to give you some kind of closure to confront him, then do it. But what's on the other end of it? Yeah, I mean, let me just put the question back to you. Leaving all this Jewish stuff aside, because, you know, I don't like to discuss uh, the ugly parts of uh, anybody from my tribe. But, that is, you know, that's an ugly feeling when someone's like, I want you to be jump you into my gang or we can't be together. And that doesn't happen. And then the next person that he gets with is a, is a blood and he was a crip. But leaving mm-hmm. that stuff aside, if I asked you that question, if I called you and I was like, Tom. I'm going to call a married woman and ask her why I broke up. Under any circumstance, would you counsel me that that's a good idea? And I was like, just for me, for closure. I need to call this married woman for closure. For me, I have unanswered questions. And if you're my friend, could would you ever tell me, yeah, I think that's a good idea? I don't Probably not. <laughs> I, it doesn't sound like a good idea to me too. I don't. I think the idea of closure is complete bullshit. The closure doesn't doesn't exist. You can you can heal, but on you your can't own. say what other people need for themselves. That's what I do on this pod. That's what this podcast but is. I, I like what Moshe is saying because I feel like it also kind of rolls in with forgiveness, and it's like you're you're granting other people lord over your own stability and your own comfort, and he doesn't get to have that because it's. It's only going to be a bad reason on why he broke up with you. It's going to be something you don't agree with. And then worse, it could be something you can't fucking fix about yourself or something that you really staunchly are. And then you have to live with that. And then the potential for questioning and like it just it it could potentially fuck with your own self-confidence because you are who you are. And he made a choice to not be with you. So then you go find someone that worships exactly who you are as you are. Because yeah. low-key, the motherfucker tried to change you off the rip. So he doesn't really, never really loved you to begin with. If I was going to say that. that same thing. Low-key, the motherfucker tried to change you off the rip. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the truth is all the negative things that could happen that he could say about you aren't even really true. It's just your reality with him. So it's like, why not focus on yourself and attract someone who is more you know, of the right kind of magnet for what you want to attract and what they want to attract, you know? Yeah, there was this guy in AA that used to say, uh, I'm not a victim. Uh, I, I have been victimized, but but I'm not a victim because when I'm a victim, I require you to come to, it's what Roy was talking about, I require you to come to me to apologize to me for the things that you victimized me, uh, f- that you victimized me about in order for me to heal. And you're never going to do that 
because you're an asshole. You know, people are mean. People are not nice. And so if you're waiting around for them to come to you and give you information so that you can heal, you'll be waiting forever. But not being a victim means you can you can find the closure. You can heal yourself. You don't need that. So that's, that's what I'm always after. I want to be able to get better on my own. As hard as it is, he might have just changed. Maybe he was immature when he was with you, and then he matured a little bit, and now he's married, and that's life, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but it was I know only two hurting, years, honey. though. <laughs> right and then no. he got married after two years people are inconsiderate i mean that's part of dating some people yeah. out there suck i mean people are just not not kind and do mean stuff and don't you have to try to be happy for him a little bit like he found someone that he wanted to be on an accelerated path with yeah no it's not that i'm not happy for him because that's fine it's just i thought it was these two things and i never got an explanation and then hearing it's not those things in my head because it was only two years different he's not jewish and what was it like that's that's fucking with my self-confidence that's fucking with my head and not letting me kind of like move on from what i thought the reason was Mm -hmm. so we didn't we didn't inspire you at all (laughs) (laughs) i i i i understand sometimes hearing it helps like on some just be straight with me type shit like i Ah, fuck, I get it, because I, I had somebody come to me like that, like, years later, like, just tell the truth. Did you cheat? Yes, I cheated. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, And it felt, wait, Roy, did it, did you, would life have been better for you if you would have never had to tell her that? Like, did it scar you, kind of? It gave me regret for how I treated her, of course. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a level of escapism, because... Mm-hmm. If we gun if we want to get into all that personality trait shit my therapist has had me on, this motherfucker's an avoidant. He didn't want to be with you. There was a reason, but he gave you something else to throw you off the scent so we could get so we could cut you loose. If you press him, you still might get another lie. That's the other Absolutely. thing, Chevin. That's really smart. I mean, how do you what could he tell you where you'd go, ah, good. Now I'm healed. Maybe it's what he wants to tell him. Is that right? Is it that you have something, some little message to drop on him? Well, maybe it's a little bit of both. Like, I do want to know. And then I also, like, maybe want to get out. Like, the last time he broke up with me, all he said was, I don't want to do this anymore. And then he left my house. Like, that was legit all. And then, like, maybe I want to say to him, well, I was looking into learning Hebrew. I was going to get my dick snipped for you. Like, I was doing all the things. And and then what? And then he's... I, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell him that. He said well, he I knows all married. that. He knows all you, that. Right. You came up with the phrase dick snipped. It's unfortunate <laughs> you're not able to give that to somebody. But look, <laughs> here's what I'm hearing from you. This is a dude that wanted me to change in order to be with him. He then when I said I would change, he didn't end up being with me. He bounced on a two year relationship with almost nothing more than like a peace out motherfucker, and he's gone. And then t- and then very quickly thereafter got married to somebody else. Why is it that you would want a person like that back in your life, even for five minutes? It's time to move on. That's why they came up with the phrase "move on" because he cannot. There's nothing there for you that will heal you. He is not a good person and you need you deserve a good That's person. True. I know it's tough. It was just like, it was five years of my life and he was the love of my life. And it was just like, he was the first person and the only person since that, that anything like that has ever gone that way. So that's kind of why I wanted the closure. But I mean, I think you're right. Maybe, I don't know. It's hard. And unfollow him on social. Oh, I did that right about- after we broke up. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, good luck, honey. Uh, Maybe replay this podcast if you need a little like pump, you know, just to to avoid because he was not the love of your life. Love of your life is a lie. There's you might have another love of your life waiting around the corner and you're busy calling the last dude trying to get closure when the real love of your life is like, hello, I'm over here. I'm Muslim. It's incredibly easy for you to convert to our religion. (laughs) You don't have to get (laughs) circumcised. Just jump on in, say, I believe three times and you're in. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Good luck, Tom. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was heavy. Did we lose you? This is nothing like my podcast. (laughs) That one was heavy. I just have people come on and talk about their worst jobs. You <laughs> that Wait, one. what is your podcast, Roy? Because you're so it's funny, just, I want to listen. It's just Roy's job fair. I talk to people about how to get jobs and jobs they hate, scams they ran. It's just what's what's the just worst a, job? What's the worst job? Period or worst job he's had? No, the worst job that you've heard of. Because I always think it's the people who are in. I mean, in terms of like the worst job that I see around me, is the people who are in the toll booths inside like a parking structure that seems pretty hard where do you shit 
Where do you yeah, shit? That's like, you know they have a tube shit. that goes right into that swirling chair. Well, you they don't take have a break, up. and then someone comes and covers your shift. <laughs> we had a girl that worked at a ballpark who said that people from the upper deck constantly vomit on people on the lower deck. Oh no! <laughs> and so wow. they would have to clean up that. You know, we have a post. We talked to a post office worker who I didn't know this. Certified letters still get sent to crack houses, and someone has to sign for them. So he would deliver certified letters and sometimes to a crack house. <laughs> so just, wow. We always said the worst job was there used to be this place in San Francisco called the Lusty Lady. It was like a little um, a peep show that you put a quarter in and the thing would slide up. And a you dollar. Would, you, you would jerk off to, you know, there'd be people constantly coming in and jerking off in these booths and then nutting. Or laughing the, and looking at them. That could be true mm-hmm. too. But then there was a guy that would come in after the people left maybe every hour with a scrubber and a bucket and he was the cum the cum cleaner uh, have you by the way have you played cum cleaners oh, no. uh, <laughs> okay roy that was a heavy one i know you got to go do you have time to do one more call let's knock another one out let's knock another okay, one let's out. knock another one out well hopefully this one be lighter and he won't i felt bad for the guy but he didn't want to hear he didn't know but you it. told him some real shit man somebody need to tell him he didn't have friends that was going to tell him that shit you told him he respects your opinion that's why he called into the pod yeah yeah all right let's okay, call we're gonna call zoe in los angeles okay i can tell already zoe doesn't have real problems <laughs> zoe come on <laughs> zoe's not dealing with real heartbreak why because zoe's parents pay her rent just because she's named zoe yeah i think <laughs> oh see i'm right <laughs> i'm right <laughs> sorry i didn't want you to hear that i was trashing you before you came on the call i don't know who you are <laughs> how you doing zoe i'm good how are you good we have roy wood jr here the one and only by the way catch his uh special imperfect messenger on comedy central it just came out so you can watch it on paramount oh Plus. shit that's a dog i thought that was a blanket i was <laughs> before it was in the window i thought i was smoking <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Because it was looking out the window a second ago. Uh, okay. Okay, so Zoe, h- how can we help you? What's going on? Okay, so I have sort of, it's sort of like a generalized issue. Um, and it's that I have, um, sorry, I just had this moment realizing that this is like when my ex boyfriend would see this and then go, oh shit, because you guys had him on too. Um, he was on our podcast as uh, well, yeah. talking shit about you. Um, he wasn't. It was the girl that he dated after me. But this is kind of about him and about oh. everyone that I've been dating recently. We only have four listeners, Roy, just so you know. <laughs> it's her, her boyfriend, the dude we just talked to. And that's kind of, oh, there's my mom d- drops in once in a while. All right. So what's up? So everyone that I've been dating, like, basically over the last year, no matter how much I like them, whatever's going on, they all sort of like end it with me for the same reason. And it's like making my head kind of spin. They, it's always like the same level of you're great. Um, I'm not ready for this. I'm having a mental health crisis. It's all like different (laughs) types. And I'm just like, do I love sad boys or like, are all boys sad? So that's well, first of all, you're calling them boys. So what Men, does that mean to you? I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's funny. Of, you're dating a very they particular... act like that. They boys. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like, it goes great. It's like the last one got to be like, I don't know. It was like eight dates we went on. And then he called me and was like, Hey, I'm just like really depressed and I'm having all these issues. And I just don't know if it's like, cause I, I don't like see a guy and go, Oh, he looks like sad. <laughs> like or like yes. wait is this all like since the pandemic yeah everybody's depressed right now yeah everyone's so like a mess yeah. but like well, Tasha's ha- saying every boy and every girl on <laughs> earth except actually roy he's actually <laughs> thriving in the pandemic what? is pretty sad you right now roy what do you think wait, of this you don't wait until eight dates to tell a motherfucker that you're going through some sad shit you need to break that out around date number two that depression was already simmering off the coast and <laughs> you should have said something Agree. Agree. Okay. So I just don't know if it's like, it's, if it's, I'm finding these people or it really is. So it really is everybody. And I know I have a different hot take. Here's my take. You're, I don't know you, but just knowing what you keep hearing, I know the kind of dudes that you date and you're dating a very particular flavor of feminist fuck boy. 
that like that's that's the thing they come up with you know at the end of when they're done and they're like yeah okay i'm not looking for anything serious but i don't like to just say it because i don't want her to think i'm an asshole they go i have mental health i got mental health issues right now and i just gotta i gotta go i don't believe it's just like the cool it's like the cool way that like i won't be like mad at them or something exactly look at you you're calling a podcast right now going what is it about me that creates this d- attraction to these poor mental h- people that are dealing with mental health crises. They're not. They're just out, and they don't want to, you to think they're a dick. Okay, that makes sense. That's what I think. I'm sorry. Honey. How, what do, well, here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a question. we got to give her some tools to go back out into the world. Don't just yes. fucking cast her away. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, honey. Just get the fuck out of here. How, what do you all talk about in those first... The first three dates, how deep does the conversation go? Because I think whatever y'all are talking about on date six and seven, you need to start moving that shit up to date (laughs) two. I mean, I'm pretty open about my own struggles with anxiety and depression. So I'm pretty like, you know, but. And I there's maybe you're oversharing and just not listening to them enough. Maybe you're talking too much about your depression up front. Oh, you think she's making them have a mental health crisis? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it might be like it just in general, I don't think that's always the best idea. To what? Share your, yourself with someone you're dating? No, but like on the first date. You know, like 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 telling a guy that you definitely want children on the first date. You know what I mean? Like that'd be uh, funny if every first date you're like, "I want kids," and every second date he's like, "I am having a mental health crisis <laughs> right now." It isn't you. No, but there are women who believe that you should just tell people right up uh, front <clears throat> what you uh, want on the first date, and I—that's uh, just not my style. I don't know. What yeah. do you think, Roy? What should they be talking about? What are the things that she should be talking to these guys on the first date about? If I were dating now, the first thing I would do, on, at least on the second date. It's all about who your family and friends are, who's your support system, who are the people that are around this person. And that's going to tell you a little bit about because the stability of the people in their orbit will give you hints to their own stability. Mm. So it's it's like in the way that you get information from someone without having to directly at, ask, ask the question. Mm-hmm. What's your friend do? Oh, what about him? Oh, what about her? What do they do? And motherfuckers yeah. love talking about their friends and the more you, I, I remember years ago, I had a, um, I don't know if I should even, or how I can say it. I, so I had a homeboy who was married, but he had two kids outside the marriage. But he was my homeboy. And I've known him since I was like fucking 15. That's my dog. And my the woman I was dating at the time, she's like, yeah, he's not good for you. And I'm like, what do you mean? What you talking about? My boy? That's my homeboy. Bitch, don't get me talking about my motherfucking friend. <laughs> She was right. And then yeah. when I looked at the people that he kept around him, none of those people possessed even remotely. Like, if there's five things you need in someone to date them, any other motherfucker in their circle should at least have two or three of those things because then that will, it inherently influences his own behavior and his own choices and the things that he values. And it's not a be all, end all. But that's a way to get people to tiptoe because inevitably they're going to talk about somebody they hate, somebody they have an issue with. And from that, you can figure out whether or not they've unpacked it. It'll show you what type of conflict resolution skills they have because my aunt stole my car. And then I said, bitch, I had to fight her. And it's like, okay, you can't. (laughs) You got all the information you need there. You're like, okay, problem. It's. It's 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 that, you know, and, and I'm that's not going to help everything. But one way that I would see a way through for you is the next person you date, see how deep you can push the conversation sooner and get it off of this favorite food. Where do you want to travel horse shit that can come in date seven and eight? So Roy's saying push the uh, the intensity of the conversation to to date two so you can really get a full of some picture of who they are natasha's saying withhold who you are and don't talk to them (laughs) for quite a while so that you No, i like accelerating the conversation accelerate the conversation just don't tell them like something like too too much on the first date maybe also because you don't want them to get a different you don't want them to get the wrong idea in their head or think that i don't know Where where do you find these people by the way dating apps like you know hinge bumble and 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 do they they have you have no they give you no red flags right before they say i'm having a mental health crisis not really i mean yeah 
Yes, no, some of them do. I guess I just think <laughs> some of I them. like Roy's. I like Roy's. Uh, Roy's idea that you start trying to get to the red flag sooner so that you can be the one to pull the eject button if you see somebody you shouldn't oh, be with. And I have a, I have one other tip. I think you should try to, just because of your frustration, date someone out of your comfort zone or out of the pool that you're usually going into, which oh, is I, like the feminist fuck boy. Yeah. I just love guys with floppy hair and glasses. Like. See, I knew they had floppy hair and glasses. <laughs> I didn't even need you to say that because I know the person you're talking about. It's a guy that that is would have been a player if he wasn't born into a culture and a time when being a player was kind of looked down upon. So he puts like an emo haircut on and some big, like thick Oliver Peoples glasses on. He's like, I love women. I'm a feminist myself. But then right at about the 30 day mark, he's just like, whoops a do. I'm having a, a, a crisis. Got to go. I'm telling you, you, there's a better boy out there. For and you. a lot of those guys who become these little fuck boys, they aren't, they're like still kind of like not that, they don't have to be that built anymore. You know, they're kind of like, <laughs> even, even like, have to be, even the weakling is kind of getting, right. getting action. All right. Well, good luck to you. I hope we've helped in some way. Roy seemed like the voice of reason and I just made fun of your dating choices. Uh, so I don't but, know. But do go outside the box a little bit. And Try was, to. Just for fun. Okay. You know, if, if there's an attraction. You know, meet a motherfucker in real life. Just go to the grocery store and just stare at an apple for 20 minutes. Men will find you. <laughs> oh, you That's meet so- up with apples? You look lost. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll be calling us. When he finds you at the apple cart, that guy, because all of your lovers call us, he'll call us in six months. He goes, I don't know why, but she was just staring at an apple for two or three hours. I said hi, and then it turned out she... She said she had a mental health crisis. She couldn't stop looking at the <laughs> apple. All right. Good luck to you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Zoe. You know, that apple thing is great, but that doesn't even work anymore because now you have a mask on. So no one can even right. see, couldn't even see how hot she was. Oh, you think a, you think a man is <laughs> not going to roll the dice off eyes and a nose bridge? <laughs> You're wrong. Mm. Eyes and a nose bridge. Dice, That's all you need. And you might be a win- You never bought a scratch off ticket before? It could be some, <laughs> be some good mouth under that mask. <laughs> All right, well, that is so funny. (laughs) The special is called Imperfect Messenger. Roy Wood Jr., it's on Comedy Central. He's also, you can see him on there all the time. I mean, when do we get to see you again? Yeah, when does your life happen? I don't know. I'll see you at some festival and we'll talk shit about all the people that, you know, we don't like. I love that. Sounds fun. That somehow sounds still good. successful, even though we hate them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Roy. Thank you so much for joining us, right, man. Y'all. Really appreciate it. Okay. Cool. All right, y'all. All right. Bye. Bye. Peace. Tosh. Yeah. Um. Usually we do a little banter back and forth, and uh, at the end, you know. But the truth is, tonight I have a friend that's taping a comedy special, and I want to go watch it. So I don't have time to come up with a clever outro. I just want to tell you one thing. You want a divorce? No, I love you. Oh, I love you too. Wait, do you want to do... Uh, if you'd like to leave a secret on our secret hotline, call 213-222-8608. Or pop us an email. Yeah, pop one on. Is that on. what the kids are saying? Yeah, pop us one. Endless Honeymoon Pod at Gmail. Yeah, or find us on on, on the Insta. Find us on, it only weighs a gram. It's called Instagram, and we'd love to see you on there. Instagram brought to you by the good people at Meta. Also, at all Endless these, Honeymoon Pod. Also, all this is on YouTube, so subscribe. Honey, please stop quoting I the eight year old. I like saying it. I can't help it. It's my qu- thing now. She's quoting Nick Thune's son, <laughs> who every time he's around our daughter, it goes, subscribe. <laughs> like he's been indoctrinated by a gavage of internet bites. Ugh. They all of our kids have, honey. No, my not our not my kid yet. She young. Yeah, we'll give her a few years. I gotta go. Okay. Okay. Unsubscribe from this marriage. Okay. No, I subscribe. Okay, I'm I'll a subs- big. Pre- I'll subscribe. I oh, I love you. Love you too.